So rational equations is going to have our variable stuck in the denominator. So the first thing we want to do is look for a least common denominator. So we want to find this value so that when we multiply everything through by that value, all of our denominators will cancel out. We want to get rid of the denominators. So for the least common denominator, what you want to do is, for the numerical piece, think about a number that the values multiply up to, and you want to typically use the smallest of those values. In this case with 5 and 3, it's going to be 15. It's just going to be the multiplication of those two numbers. And then we also have y in there, so we also want to use y. So that's our least common denominator. Then what we're going to do is multiply every term by that least common denominator. So what this will look like is I'm going to take 15y and then I'm going to multiply that with 3 over 5y. Then I'll have plus 15y times 4 over 3y. And then that's going to equal 15y times negative 5. So everything gets multiplied by that least common denominator. Now when we simplify here, what should happen is these denominators should cancel out. So if we look at 15y and then divided by 5y, well that 15 divided by 5 would leave us with a 3, and then y would cancel out with y. So we end up with a 3 times 3 there, which is 9. For the next term, 15 divided by 3 would leave us with 5, and then those y's would cancel out. So we end up with 5 times 4. And then equals 15y times negative 5. So we would just multiply those together, which is negative 75y. So by canceling out those denominators, now we'll have something, in this case, linear to solve. Maybe it'll turn into a quadratic. It's something that we can use previous methods for. So with this, I'm going to simplify. So 29 equals negative 75y. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 75. So what I end up with is y equals negative 29 over 75. And then what we can do is go to the calculator and check that this works. So what we'll do is go to the Desmos calculator. And what's nice is there's this button that separates numerator and denominator, so that can help in organizing your work. So I'm going to have 3 in the numerator, and then 5, and I'm going to use parentheses, negative 29 over 75, and then close those parentheses. And then plus, I'm going to separate my fraction, 4, and then the denominator, 3 times negative 29 over 75. And then we can see we get negative 5 out, so that's balancing the equation. Okay, let's look at a few more examples here. So something that'll help when you have expressions in the denominators is to factor first. So what I'm going to do is take out that greatest common factor of 5, so that that's an x minus 6, minus 2 over x minus 6. And something I like to do is throw parentheses around addition and subtraction pieces, because that groups together, and then equals 1. So, my least common denominator, any pieces that are multiplying together, so I have a 5 as a factor, I have an x minus 6 as a factor. As you can see, we have x minus 6 again, but you don't need to have repeats once you see it once. Just use it again. So my least common denominator is going to be 5 times x minus 6. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by 5 times x minus 6. So I'll have 5 times x minus 6 times x over 5 times x minus 6 minus 
5 times x minus 6 times 2 over x minus 6. How you deal with the negative there is up to you. You can go plus and then just have the negative attached to the 2. It just kind of depends on um, your preference. And then equals 5 times x minus 6 times 1. Now we're going to simplify. So for the first term, the 5's cancel, and that whole x minus 6 cancels. So all we'll have left over is just x. For the second term, we'll have that entire x minus 6 will cancel out, but we have that 5 left over. So we end up with this negative 5 times 2, so minus 10. And then equals, and then just multiplying by 1 leave us, leaves us with 5 times x minus 6. And then I'm just going to simplify. So 5x minus 30. Then I'm going to move pieces. So this is linear, so I need a variable on one side. And then move the constant term to the other. So I'll end up with 20 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4. We'll end up with x equals 5. And then we could check our answer by plugging in. In fact, with these rational equations, we have to check. It's mandatory. I think I put it up here. Yeah, check any and all solutions. With linear and quadratic, you can kind of get away with not doing it. It's still a good idea so that you know with 100% certainty you have the right answer. With these, we want to be careful of solutions that don't actually work. So there are solutions that can come up in the solving process that aren't actual solutions. So what we would want to do is, let's go ahead to the calculator to double check. So we'd have, our answer was 5, so 5 over 5 times 5 minus 30 minus, and then fraction 2 over 5 minus 6. And we get that positive 1 out. So plugging in 5 absolutely works. Let's look at one more example here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and factor using the difference of squares. So this is the same thing as k over k minus 2 minus 3 over k plus 2 equals 12 over k plus 2 times k minus 2. So I'm just going to throw parentheses around pieces so I can see where our factors are. So for making my least common denominator, I'm going to need a k minus 2 piece. I'm going to need a k plus 2 piece. And then we can see then we just have repeats. So we don't need to repeat them again. So what I'll do is my least common denominator is going to be k minus 2 times k plus 2. So let's go ahead and write this out with our multiplication. So k minus 2 times k plus 2, and that's going to multiply with k over k minus 2. Then we'll have subtraction, k minus 2 times k plus 2, multiplying with 3 over k plus 2, equals k minus 2 times k plus 2, times 12 over k plus 2, k minus 2. All right, so let's see how things cancel out. So with this first one, the k minus 2 will cancel out, so I'll be left with k times that k plus 2. For the second term, k plus 2 will cancel out, so I'll be left with this negative 3 times k minus 2 and then equals, and on the other side of the equation, everything will cancel out. So we'll just have 12 left over. Now I'm gonna start simplifying, so I'm gonna distribute the k into the k plus two, and that negative three into the k minus two. So I'm gonna have k squared plus two k minus three k plus six equals 12. 
And then I can start seeing that this is going to be quadratic. So I'm going to want to end up moving 12 over so I have 0 on one side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. I'm also going to combine these like terms. So positive 2k and negative 3k. So that'll be negative k. And then positive 6 minus 12 will be negative 6 equals 0. All right. So now I need to factor. And that will be k minus 3 and k plus 2. Those are the two numbers. So again, negative 3 and positive 2 multiply to negative 6 and add up to negative 1. I separate into the two possible solutions, the fact that k minus 3 has to equal 0 or k plus 2 has to equal 0. So that's going to give us k is positive 3 or k is negative 2. But before we can finish, we have to check. So let's check that positive 3 first. So we have 3 divided by and then 3 minus 2 minus 3 divided by 3 plus 2. And we want to see, is that the same thing as 12 divided by 3 squared? And minus 4. And that balances out. So that k equals 3, that works great. Let's see what happens when we plug in negative 2. And what's nice about using a Desmos calculator, say I just wanted to use that form again, you can copy and paste. Then I just want to change that to negative 2 and negative 2. And what we can see is it says it's undefined. What's happening is when we plug in negative 2 plus 2 into that denominator, it's making a denominator of 0, which we cannot divide by 0. So this is a case where we have an extraneous solution, and we see that k equals negative 2 actually isn't a solution. k equals 3 is the one and only solution. So with rational equations, find that least common denominator, multiply everything, and then solve, and then be sure to check your answers at the end in case of extraneous solutions.